My name is Dr. Neil Baum. I'm a urologist in New Orleans, Louisiana, and I would like to spend the next few moments speaking with you about kidney stones. This is probably mankind's greatest painful affliction that affects millions of American men and women. In this five to seven minute video, I'm going to discuss with you the symptoms of kidney stone disease. I'll discuss with you the common causes of kidney stones. I'll talk to you about several of the treatment options. And most importantly, I'll talk to you about prevention, what you can do to prevent having a recurrence of your kidney stone disease. The symptoms of kidney stones are severe back pain, usually on the side where the stone is blocking the urinary tract. The pain often radiates into the inguinal area and into the testicle in men and into the vaginal area of women. There is usually blood in the urine. It either can be seen or it can be seen under the microscope when the doctor examines the urine and will see microscopic blood in the urine. There can be accompanying burning on urination. If there is associated infection as well as a kidney stone, there can be fever, chills, nausea, and even vomiting. The diagnosis of kidney stones is easily made, usually by the history, the physical exam of pain in the back area, an examination of the urine usually reveals blood, and then the doctor may order some x-rays to actually see where the stone is located and how much obstruction to the urinary tract exists. Let's now look at the causes of kidney stones. Far and away, most kidney stones are made up of calcium, usually calcium oxalate. Another common cause of kidney stones is uric acid, which is a result of breakdown of meat and protein products. Struvite stones are usually associated with urinary tract infections. And cysteine stones is a rare inherited disease that consists of passing too many cysteine crystals into the urine. The treatment of kidney stones is usually consists of consuming large quantities of fluids to promote flushing of the stone out of the urinary tract. Most doctors will recommend you consume two to three quarts of fluids a day, and you should urinate into a strainer in order to capture the stone and you can submit it to the doctor for an analysis and will help identify the cause of your kidney stone. There are various procedures that can be performed if the stone is too large to pass. The doctor can insert a wire basket into the urinary tract to capture the stone and pull it out. The doctor can also use an instrument, a fiber optic instrument, inserted into the urinary tract to identify the location of the stone and then to pulverize the stone using either shock waves or electrohydraulic power to cause the stone to fragment into sand-like particles. Large stones, especially those stones in the kidney itself, can be treated with shock wave lithotripsy. This is the introduction of a shock wave outside of the body that can be uh, accurately focused onto the stone to cause the stone to break up into sand-like particles and then pass naturally through the urinary tract. Today, with all the modern technology available to remove stones, only occasionally does open surgery need to be performed to remove the kidney stone. Now let's talk about prevention. What can be done to prevent having a second, third, or multiple recurrent episodes of passing of kidney stones? Far and away, the best treatment of all is consuming large quantities of fluid, especially water. I usually recommend that the amount of water needed to be consumed is enough to make the urine appear white. 
if the urine is dark yellow, that means it is concentrated and the crystals in the urinary tract are now closer together and can adhere to one another and start the formation of a kidney stone. There are also medications that your doctor may give you to change the acidity or alkalinity of your urine. There are also dietary modifications. For example, if you have a calcium oxalate stone, you will be recommended to decrease your consumption of foods that are high in oxalate, such as chocolate, spinach, coffee, and tea. It is important, though, that you do not decrease your calcium if you have a calcium oxalate stone, as calcium is helpful for binding the oxalate within the gastrointestinal tract so it is not absorbed into the body and then excreted in the kidneys. If you have a uric acid stone, you will be advised to decrease your consumption of protein such as eggs, meat, and fish. And if you have a cysteine stone, there are medications that can be used to decrease the excretion of cysteine in the urine and also medications to raise the urinary pH to allow passage of the cysteine particles. In summary, kidney stones are a common ailment that affects millions of American men and women. The symptoms are usually back pain with radiation to the inguinal or groin area and the evaluation is easily made with a history, a urinalysis, and an occasional x-ray. Treatment is required only for those stones that do not pass spontaneously, but effective treatment is available and most people do not require open surgery for the removal of their kidney stones. Finally, the last piece of advice is that you need to drink lots of water, enough water that turns your urine white. In this situation, water is absolutely your best medicine. I know you may have some additional questions regarding kidney stones, and I'd like to refer you to my website, www.neilbaum.com, or you're welcome to call my office at 504-891-8454. Thank you.